so mm, I'm so nervous <laughs> I'm literally just about to go into my assessment and I don't even know what to expect I feel I feel sick I've like had headache for the past like three days I'm like shaking I don't know what to expect and like I don't know what the structure is to the assessment so it's like really like making me anxious but my assessment is in 20 minutes so I just had my autism assessment and guess what? I'm autistic, who knew? <laughs> everybody, everybody knew. So I thought that I would kind of talk a little bit about the assessment, what it entailed, how it kind of went and you know what was asked of me and things like that. Kind of the whole, I'm just gonna give you the whole story so strap in because it's probably gonna be a long one. I feel like the first thing I'm gonna say is I was originally supposed to have my autism assessment like I swear to god three years ago. I went to my GP three years ago and I was like here's a whole load of notes and things that I've made I think I've got ADHD and I'm autistic please can I have a referral my GP at the time was like sure why not yeah and made the referral I was under the impression that they made the referral for autism and ADHD I was incorrect okay this is not what happened they actually only referred me for ADHD so I waited around a year and a half to two years for my ADHD assessment which I had last year and I was obviously diagnosed ADHD combined and during the assessment I at the end of it I said to them hey when do I have my autism assessment and this man looked at me so confused was like this is not what no you that's not what no you don't be referred for that and I was like excuse me <laughs> what <laughs> are you sure they just had not referred me and i had to go back to my gp which was really infuriating and say to them like i wasn't referred for autism and they were like yeah no we didn't do that it's just the adhd one do you still want to be referred for autism and i was like kind of yeah i still, still do need the assessment for that too so then i was referred for my autism assessment and bearing in mind it's been two years and i thought that i'd been waiting two years for both adhd and autism when i hadn't it was just adhd after i had my adhd assessment after i've been to my gp in regards to my autism assessment i didn't really want to wait any longer than i had to and so i asked if i could have it through the right to choose I originally asked for the right to choose for my ADHD assessment and the GP refused and was like, no. I was like, okay. And I just let them kind of refuse me. I didn't really feel like it was necessary for me to wait an extra three years when I'd already been waiting two years. And it was just because the GP hadn't referred me when they were supposed to, which is why I was on such a long wait list. So I asked for it through the right to choose. And the GP again was like, no we're not gonna do that because we have to pay for it out of pocket and i was like no you don't it's completely nhs funded like you do not have to pay for it and they just was not having any of it they was not listening to me at all i felt like i felt like really upset that they wasn't listening to me and just kept telling me i was wrong when i knew that i wasn't and so i sent them all of the information about the right to choose i was like look the gp literally just has to sign this pre-written letter and i got a call from the receptionist who was like the gps had a look over it and they're just not going to sign it because we have to fund it and i was about to be like okay that's fine i'll just wait the additional three years but i was like no something in me something in me was like Adelaide stand up for yourself come on you can do this and so I did I attempted to stand up for myself and I said it really isn't like that big of a deal they just have to sign it can you please get the GP to relook at the letter and just sign the form like it's NHS funded I've sent you all the documents you need to know I've sent you a link to the website it even says on there that it's NHS funded and the receptionist was having none of it I said to the receptionist I was like okay that's fine can I please have him writing that the GP is refusing to sign my right to choose. And the receptionist was all flustered and she was, you know, no, 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 they're not refusing, they're not refusing. They just, you know, we have to pay for it. And I was like, you do not have to pay for it. It's NHS funded. Can I please get in writing that the GP is refusing to sign it? And the receptionist again was like, no, 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 we're not refusing to sign it. And I was like, well, are they signing it? No, why? Because they're refusing, so it's a refusal. Can I have that in writing? At this point, I am shaking like a damn shitting dog. I'm like, can I have it in writing, please? I was so scared. I do not like confrontation at all, but I just really needed to stand up for myself. The receptionist was like, I'll just put you on hold one second. And I was on hold for like 10 minutes and they came back and the receptionist was like, okay, you know, the GP has looked over it and you know, actually, yeah, it is NHS funded. So we're gonna sign the form and we'll send it off this afternoon. And I was like, thank you. Like, I knew I was correct. Like. Just read the form. After this like whole ordeal, 
honestly for like three days after this phone call I was so poorly I had like headache I was feeling nauseous I was really anxious and I'm like oh my god what is wrong with me I'm getting poorly and I wasn't it was just the stress of the phone call had like wiped me because I was like bitch you are wrong and I know you're wrong and you know you're wrong and I'm telling you that you're wrong so please correct this and I didn't like that I had to do that but it turned out okay in the end <laughs> after waiting like a couple of weeks I received an email from Psychiatry UK which is who the assessment was with via the right to choose and it was kind of just like you know you'll receive this form like blah 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 fill it in and I got given two forms I had a self-assessment form and a form which was basically the exact same form but that a parent or you know someone close to you had to fill out and the good thing with Psychiatry UK and the good thing about the adult assessment is more so the fact that they don't really rely on the parent signing and filling this form in they more so kind of go off of you and your experience because they realize and understand that parents don't always know how their child's feeling and things like that i did have my mum fill it in and i also had adam i don't know if anyone remembers adam from my videos he was in amsterdam with him when i did vlogtober i also had him fill out uh the form as well and i had like my friends and stuff write statements for me after these forms were filled in i was told it'd be 12 weeks up to 12 week wait for an appointment and I was like, that's fine, like three months is a lot better than three years. So, you know, it is what it is. The reason it was 12 weeks and not sooner with the right to choose is because it is via the NHS, it's NHS funded. Whereas if you go through Psychiatry UK and you pay for private, the assessment process is a lot quicker because you kind of get prioritized because you're paying for it as opposed to people who do it through the NHS. For some reason, I just didn't understand that the 12 weeks meant from when I'd filled the forms in. I thought the 12 weeks meant like in total. And so after 12 weeks of me like being referred, I'm like, I've not heard anything. So I give them a call and I was like, I've not heard anything. Like what's going on? And they were like, no, it's 12 weeks from after you filled your forms in, which was literally like six weeks ago, babe. So calm down. It kind of literally was like nothing. It was just a waiting game. I did not hear a single thing from them. I didn't get any emails and again, no updates, nothing like that to kind of tell me like how the things go in, which is kind of the same with the NHS as well. Any type of assessment, you don't really hear anything until you get given your appointment. <laughs> Excuse me. I then a few weeks later received a phone call, but it was from an unknown number. I do not answer unknown numbers. Like, I don't know who this is. I don't know what they want. I don't want, if anyone rings me and they're like selling something, I'll buy it because I don't, I don't know how to say no. And I got a voicemail that was kind of like, we're from Psychiatry UK, got an appointment, blah, blah, blah. So I called them back but I had to leave a message and I just kind of said like I missed a phone call is anyone any chance anyone can ring me back I don't know if I've missed an appointment or anything like that and I got a message in my portal which is like on the website that basically said you know they'll give me a call in a few days so I assumed in like two or three days I'd get a call to be like you got an appointment in such and such a time no mm -mm, was not the case a month and a half a month and a half went by and I'm thinking this is a bit more than a few days like I don't know what your few days is but my few days is three like a few is three, I'm pretty sure, because I've not heard anything. And then all of the messages messages I'd left on my portal were being ignored and not ignored. They just, it said like they received, but just hadn't been read. And so I thought, I don't really know what's going on. I'll give them a call. So I rang them and I was like, hi, I'm waiting for an autism assessment. I missed a call about a month and a half ago and was told I'd get a call back in a few days, but no one said anything. This poor reception woman was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah, someone should have rang you a few days later. One second, one second put me on hold and came back with the news that you know the I'm able to have an appointment on the 11th of May with this gentleman who works for Psychiatry UK and I was like that's perfect thank you so much and after the phone call I hung up and of course my autistic brain was like well I need to know exactly who this man is I need to know like his degree and his credentials and with Psychiatry UK they've got like a directory of all of the psychologists and stuff so I went and looked for the gentleman that I had my assessment with and I was like mm-mm what is going on and his entire profile was like ADHD, ADHD, ADHD. Nowhere on this profile, on this man's profile did it say autism and I was like, what? <laughs> Am I going to the ADHD assessment? Like what is going on? So I plucked up the courage, right? You know, I was like, you can do this, you can do this Adelaide. And I rang them back and said, hi, the guy I've got my assessment with doesn't do autism assessments. This is definitely an autism assessment and not an ADHD assessment. I've already been assessed for ADHD and I do have ADHD and I really don't want another ADHD assessment. Please tell me this is an autism assessment. And this woman was like, yeah, it's definitely autism. And I was like, this man doesn't do autism assessments. I've looked, like he doesn't. And she, bless her, she was like, 
oh my goodness I'll have a look for you and she did some research herself and came back to me and was like you are right you know it doesn't stay anywhere that he does autism assessments but you know told me that he does and I said I really don't feel comfortable with someone who doesn't kind of have one of the credentials as an autism for autism assessments and they're mostly to do with ADHD and the woman was very very helpful she was like I can get you with somebody else if that will make you more comfortable I was very apologetic and I said I really don't want him to be offended I don't want you know to cause anyone any upset I just I would rather someone who specializes in autism and they was like obviously of course I completely understand like the fact that it doesn't say it on the website I'm kind of glad that you've called and told us about this and so I was then given an assessment date with somebody else called Owen and it was for the 12th of May which is today I've just had my assessment I did some research after the call and he's like one of the top people there who does autism assessments and I was like oh my god I'm so glad I stood up for myself because now I've got like this great person who's got all these raving reviews and so I was really excited this was back in like March that I had this phone call so obviously my appointment my, they told me my appointment on the 12th of May in March so I've waited until then to have my assessment and the assessment process was not easy but it wasn't like really super difficult i had obviously already filled the forms out my mum had filled the forms out adam had filled the form out so he had like pretty much all of the information that he needed but i sat on my computer where i we did it via zoom call and i had all of the information from my like questionnaires and stuff like on the computer ready and i had all of like my notes in my like notebook that's here and stuff because i wanted to make sure that i was like fully prepared i was like really hoping that we'd get to do the assessment in order of what the questions were asked on the questionnaire because that's how i'd planned it in my head and i was like i really don't want him to like go away from the order and he didn't he like literally did it in order it was perfect a lot of the questions that he asked were kind of the same questions that were on the questionnaire but i just got to explain it in more detail and explain what i meant and asked like clarifying questions about the questions that he asked as well so like sometimes when the questions are very broad i prefer it to be specific so i can answer it depending on the specific circumstance and he was very understanding with that and the questions that he was asking were very much directed towards me an adult and not me a child which i really appreciated one of the things that i was really worried and concerned about was that a lot of the questions would be like geared towards a child but it wasn't it was very much anything that you did in your childhood that you still do now anything that you do that you learn like to handle differently and stuff like that asked me about my school life so asked me how i found primary school and high school and college and university asked me how I found the transitions asked me about making friends and how I maintained friendships what I'm like in relationships asked me about my home life asked me about my routines asked me about my need and want for structure and like sameness with things rewatch like specific tv shows and films over and over again we talked a little bit about my interests and what the interests mean to me and we also discussed family holidays and family social gatherings and social gatherings in general asked me questions about how i deal with social situations now and when i was younger and what the difference is how i handle it anything that i have in place to be able to cope more with social situations and it was very very like informal which i i appreciated and the questions that he were asking were questions that I'd already been asked on the questionnaire so there was nothing kind of like new or nothing that I wasn't expecting so it was very very structured which I really appreciated I went into quite a lot of detail and a lot of the questions and when I was explaining things I was just like does that make sense and he just was like yeah it makes perfect sense it's fine and explained to me that a lot of the way that he does the assessment isn't just based on my answers but based on the way I give my answers he was telling me you know it's about the way you deliver your answers the way you present yourself and speak and he noticed obviously even though it was over zoom call he obviously made a note of the fact that I didn't really look at him um all that often and whenever I was talking I look away because I can't like look directly at someone I'm, when I'm speaking he asked me about eye contact and I said like I can make eye contact but I have to make a conscious choice on whether or not I'm making eye contact with someone or whether I'm listening to the conversation because I can't do both it's one or the other and um, we talked about my like sensory difficulties with light and texture and taste and touch and things 
and how I do have like really sensitive eyes. So if I'm in like certain lights, my pupils tend to not adjust to the light at a regular speed. We talked a lot about my hobbies and any hobbies I had as a child and how I dealt with the hobby, whether it was a social hobby or not. How I dealt with school as a social setting and also as an environment for learning and it was really nice. It was very thorough. I was able to explain myself and I didn't feel like I needed to mask when I was talking to him, which was quite nice because I, that was one thing I was worried about was that I was going to try and mask and act normal to not have him think I was like weird or unusual or like odd, I don't know. So I was really nervous that I was gonna mask during the assessment and felt like if I did that, then I wouldn't really be getting the proper assessment. So I did my best to kind of explain myself in a way that I felt comfortable and talk the way that I felt comfortable. I didn't feel like I needed to make unnecessary eye contact. I didn't feel like I needed to over explain what I was saying. I was able to explain enough to a point where I felt comfortable, but then I could just stop talking and didn't really need to fill the silence with anything which was quite nice I didn't feel like I had to make small talk with him he didn't really make small talk he didn't try and engage in small talk he didn't do anything that made me confused he was very literal in what he was saying and the way he asked the questions was very literal as well which I appreciated but overall it was a very very good experience from like start to finish it took about an hour and then at the end of the assessment he said that he felt like he had enough information to go on to give me an actual diagnosis right there and then and he didn't feel like he needed to go off and think about it or do any more research or ask me anything else he said that I do present very clearly as a person with ADHD and autism and he was very happy to give me an autism diagnosis. I know a lot of people have been diagnosed with like labels like level one, level two, level three. I didn't get that. I just got a diagnosis of autism. He just said he's happy to give me an autism diagnosis and that's all he said. He said it will take maybe a week or so for me to get the letter detailing my diagnosis or so whether that will say level one, two or three on it. I'm not entirely sure what that will say, whether it's just going to say yeah you you autistic like obviously <laughs> like I don't really know what the letter's gonna say I'll also receive an email with this and then he will write up my actual diagnosis and how he kind of came to his conclusion and all of his notes and stuff I'll receive that as a letter and an email that will also get sent to my GP which is nice I'm not sure whether he's gonna write Adelaide as the name on it because it's not technically my legal name as of yet he was very very lovely and he did call me Adelaide throughout the entire assessment which I appreciated because I know that a lot of medical professionals do still use my dead name and it is very very infuriating they do refuse to call me Adelaide because it's not legal yet but he was very kind of adamant of that it was okay to call me Adelaide and I appreciated that but yeah I've just been rambling for like 40 minutes so I'll do my best to cut this down. I guess that that's really all I have to say right now. I'm very like, I don't know, I'm very just like, I've just been diagnosed as autistic. I don't think I've processed it very much yet and I feel like I will probably have a lot more to say in the future. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments and I will kind of compile some questions and I'll do like a Q&A video I guess and talk about the diagnosis process if anyone is interested. I do feel like I've covered most of it but I think right now I'm gonna go have a cup of tea and relax a little bit because I'm just like I don't know <laughs> I don't really know how I'm feeling right now but yeah I hope that this video was somewhat informative if it wasn't I'm super super sorry but yeah I guess I will see you next time bye